We're going to take a look at your front pages now so you don't have to go out and buy your papers. The Telegraph leading with reports that senior cabinet ministers are pushing for an overhaul of the government's net zero plans after the recent price cap rise. Here's the mirror. They say the performance of Rishi Sunak and other Conservative ministers was insulting to the public after they started laughing in the House of Commons during the unveiling of the new energy caps. The Times leads on households experiencing the biggest fall in their living standards since records began. Daily Mail also looks at Downing Street, which it claims has gone into meltdown after the Prime Minister ordered a clear out of senior aides or after they cleared out before he ordered it. We're not sure which way round that is. <laughs> Chicken and the egg. Uh, well, here to go through the papers with us this morning is the broadcaster, Liz Kershaw, and the former Conservative Red Wall advisor, Oscar Redrop. Very warm welcome back to both of you. Um, Oscar, let's start then with the, the front of the Times. And, you know, to be honest, most of the papers covering this in some capacity, although the Downing Street shenanigans shunting it, unbelievably shunting it off um, some of the front pages. And this is about uh, that cost of living crisis that we're facing. Yeah, this, uh, I think we all, I mean, we, because of the pandemic, because we have consistently, uh, I think, in the media, and unfortunately, number 10, obsessed over the personal politics, we have overlooked this issue. It has been creeping up on us, and it is absolutely here now. I think some of the, I think what's brilliant actually about uh, just in the green room watching the show is actually just on the doorstep hearing people's real world uh, problems and the reaction to the news we're seeing today. Um, it's a huge risk um, that the government are basically banking with the, the softening kind of policy that we're seeing from Sunak. They're basically banking that energy prices are, go are, go are going to be lower in the future. And there's absolutely no guarantees on that whatsoever. I think the real pinch point, and I, I'm trying to be uh, as upbeat as possible, but it, but it is hard with stories like this, mm, yeah. will be in April, where there'll be a, a national insurance tax hike. And, and that is going to be, I think, real crisis moment for a lot of people. But, but I suppose, Oscar, I mean, people have got to be realistic. I, I think it's awful. I totally agree with everything you're yeah. saying. But how the heck is he going to pay for this furlough business and, and all that went on during coronavirus? No, completely. I mean, the, the economy, as we all know, for obvious reasons, has suffered shocks that it hasn't had to deal with in 300 years. I, I think the real solution, this is my personal view, is that after a huge seismic crisis like this, where we need to balance the books and try and soften stuff for normal people just trying to get about their lives, I think we need to rethink the net zero policy because we are also taking that on our shoulders at the same time. And the two is just too much. And I know government ministers are, are, are start, and a lot of Tory backbench MPs, I think in the coming uh, weeks and months, will apply real pressure on that. We need to have a real rethi yeah. rethink about uh, that. Seriously, though, Oscar, I mean, you know, take on board what you're saying. What are the chances of that happening, particularly the way the UK would look on the world stage? Uh, I mean, I think the way... It's not going to happen. Well, I, I think first and foremost, uh, the, the UK uh, and Number 10 need to sort out, get their own house in order before we can start worrying about what the other nations think. Uh, they need to get their own house in order and then we can actually concentrate on our domestic policy. Um, hopefully, I mean, as we previously discussed that the chaos at the moment cannot continue. And then we can have a genuine, uh, upfront and hopefully productive conversation about how regular people are meant to be burdened with so much, so much. Yeah, it looks like uh, regular people are going to be about two and a half thousand quid worse off. And they say that is the worst credit crunch in 32 years. Well, a, a suggestion, he could start off by recouping, is it 39 billion or something that people have taken free money from the government mm -hmm. and a lot of it fraudulently by setting mm -hmm. up businesses deliberately to claim. I mean, I did my end of year tax, I'm sure you have, and the accountant's going, well, did you not get any loans, self-employed? Did you not take any money off the government? I said, no, mm -hmm. it never, it never occurred to me, but people have been taken, re and there's and and there seems absolutely no attempt to recoup that. I think, uh, again, I agree, I said last time I was on, we've got a, a, absolutely no energy security. We've, you know, closed down the mines, we've banned fracking, we're phasing out North Sea oil and gas, we're relying on wind power. If there's no wind, we're short of energy. If there's loads of wind, then it could, you know, it can blow up the whole system overload. It's it's just ridiculous. We're asking people to pay 250 quid um, on their energy bills, you know, for this green policy, and then we're giving it back to them, 200 mm. quid towards your gas. It's, I was, it's just I was ridiculous. reading today that um, with the advent of electric cars, we lose revenue from yeah. petrol. 
for instance. Mm. Right. Mm. And um, so basically then they've got to tax us in other ways to make up for that. So the green dreams, not Although all that it Although we could make money if we get fact, world, well, world leaders with the gigafactories and the batteries for electric cars. There's loads of manufacturing opportunities in the green world and lots of people watching, not everybody, but a lot of people were saying, should we really be sacrificing the green agenda when, as Liz says, there's so much waste going on in government with fraud and, and writing off however much it is in left, right and centre on PPE contracts. No, no, I, I think uh, government, uh, the, it's interesting, the Conservatives are, have always based their brand around kind of economic competency and managing, you know, uh, managing the books, balancing the books well. And admittedly, in the face of a crisis like COVID, many eyes were taken off many balls, it seems. And I think that will be a real, you know, the next election, for example, that will be that kind of rebranding from the Tories to kind of say, hang on, no, we, we, you can trust us with money. I think it's a really, really tough job they've got on, got well, on there. Well, they need to brand themselves as Conservatives, don't they? Small state, low taxes, you know, make your own decisions, be personally responsible. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't help people in need. Of course you do. That's fundamental. But at the moment, it's big state, big spend, hand it out, take it back. Oh, you're a bit short now. We'll hand you some back. It, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the one thing on this with the, the cost of living, and we're talking about energy a lot, obviously, but the other thing is mortgage bills. Now, I, don't, I did economics, and I was always taught that you put up interest rates in order to take money out of people's pockets so that they've got less disposable income, therefore they, there's less demand for other goods, therefore it cools down demand, it cools down the economy, it cools down inflation. So at the time when, due to global factors like energy, off-the-scale energy prices, which are taking vast amounts of money out of people's pockets, why the hell? What, what is the what's the rationale for the Bank of England putting up the base rate? To, to yeah, because there's less money about it's anyway. Less, there's, people have got less money to spend anyway. You know, okay, we we that lady you had on um, yeah. just before half six was saying, I'm going to have to spend more on food, so I'm not going to be going to the cinema. That's mm. a living example yeah. of the theory behind raising but interest you, rates. But you've got another what has become policy here. This is page ten of the Times buying blankets. Well. Um, you know, it's like, well, turn your heating down and keep warm. Um, I'm all for that. I like a cool house. And then if I get caught, I'm, I'm call me stingy, but why eat a four-bedroomed house? You know, like yesterday, I put my fleecy onesie on. Yeah. And I stuck a water bottle onesie. and oh. I watched talking pictures. In Amazing. The I was lovely and toasty. So I'm all for I that. I love talking pictures. I love talking pictures. I do. I said I have them all series linked tape. Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching um, uh, about the great black actors we yesterday. We digress. Yeah. yeah. No, it's brilliant. There's yeah. a Talking Pictures Festival every year in Stockport. Really? You'll have to come. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do you know what gets me? We don't do interviews with movies stars like that anymore yeah um it's all gimmick and all sorts of it's just trivial everything's trivial yeah. there's no real interesting conversation you see interviews with people like richard burton holding a, a glass of a whiskey cigarette. In his hand and a cigarette <laughs> yeah. and saying well i said to elizabeth uh, come and marry me i immediately fell lustily in love with her and you know and it's it's just it's amazing I've done that impression before that was very good <laughs> very good <laughs> anyway very good. i was just thinking that um I, I, it's, I think it's time we, we showed the Monty Python sketch again, you know, and, and we had a handful of gravel, and if you tell that to the kids today, because yesterday I was thinking, mm. I'm OK with this, but I don't want to think we're going back to the days when we were kids. I remember when we had no, you know, growing up, we had no central heating. Ice on the inside of the Ice windows. On the lino on the floor. One bar electric fire. You know what? My dad used to get up, light the coal fire. Yes. Then they'd hang our uniforms over the, yes, the, the, the maid. Fire guards. Yeah, and then we'd all huddle around and get yeah. dressed and have a bowl of porridge. We'd be off to school with our Liberty bodies and quite, fire gloves. I don't want that back. Quite sweet, sentimental and nice sort of cosy memory. Never did us any harm. I mean, I honestly remember being seven or eight and being entrusted with lighting the fire in yeah. the morning with the fire lighters and the yeah. newspaper and the and the sticks that you would put on, I could yeah. do it to I this day. It's, no, 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 it's, it's interesting, and I, I don't do the link for you, but we, we, the, come on to the next story in terms of um, Half Dead Dave. This, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. This, no, this is, yeah, explain this to us. Who is Half Dead Dave and why is he in the news? So, 
<laughs> this is like the, the, the knowledge transfer between young and old, I think. And this is why your story, I think, links really well with this. So, uh, watch it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, younger and older. Me and Emma, uh, yeah. we might want to talk in so pictures, but we've got life in us. We were yet. getting on so well. Um, so basically, a, a veteran plumber nicknamed Half Dead Dave uh, because of his age has won £25,000 in compensation, basically because people were taking the mickey out of him at work. And uh, to, w- one, with the, the energy uh, and cost of living crisis, that 25 k I'm, I'm very happy to see Dave mm. take that home. But more importantly, like... Uh, in the, in the industry I work in, you know, it, it, it is, it's a very young industry. But as a, as a young person, you do crave actually working alongside people with a bit of wisdom. And, and actually that, that kind of that age bias, I think, is something we do need to talk about and think about more. You know, some of the best conversations I've ever had at work are with people that, you know, in inverted commas, may be deemed to be, you know, too old. And even when we're talking about... Um, the energy crisis now, like my, my gra- I, I'm, you know, turning my heating down and getting a blanket out and all that kind of stuff. I'm doing that. And uh, that always makes me think of my grandma and just like, you know, the, the stuff she used to tell me when I was a kid. And so I think young and old um, in the workplace, especially, I, I think there's uh, there's real synergy and, and yeah. should be encouraged. That and that's one of the things that's really been lost, I think, with people working from home. Yeah. And, you know, there's certain people of, of my age group who are quite happy Absolutely. to do that because it means they can connect more with their own family. But for those at the beginning of their career, they're not learning from those who've been doing it for decades. Yeah. And, and that's a real loss to the to the workplace. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, um, talking about Half Dead Dave, <laughs> did, 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 and ask each of you to think, did you have a nickname at school or work? I mean, Isabella and here is known as Potty Mouth Pierce. Oh my um, God. Oh, well, after yesterday, I was disgusted, Dis- frankly. Actually, I immediately shocked. turned oh, over Liz, to talking to Don't say that. Shocked. My mother in law, Mrs. Was... Pierce, the original Mrs. Pierce, genuinely was horrified I, with me. So, oh, Isabel, um, I've been in, on national channels I stopped for 37 I stopped years short. and I've never sworn on a. Oh my God. <laughs> Taxi for one. Yeah. Taxi then, for one. If it's, if it's not in your manner or your vocabulary like me you, yeah. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't did you have a nickname Liz I, not at school but I've my, my nephew and niece gave me a nickname which was well it's happy happy but happy uh, I'm happy uh, I must have a permanent simple love, grin that's, on my that's, face. that's a great what gift. about you I suppose they called me Sherlock at school oh there you uh, go I like uh, it not oh, sure yeah. mine's suitable for broadcast. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll speak to Isabel. Yeah, we'll do, sure it, we'll do it later. We'll do yeah, it later. Right. But I always remember, you know, like when you went to school with people who would um, wet themselves and whatever, and then they would stink for the rest of the day. <laughs> and I can't name the names. I can't name the names, but they always called... that at Rochdale Comedy. Did you not? No. We had, did you never have somebody in the class who constantly pooed their pants? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, Amy. Not at my girls' school either. And they were 17. Oh. Well the <laughs> but they're always like, I can't, I can't give the surname because it identifies people they're known as smelly whatever you know like some smelly Aww. webster or whatever yeah, it is yeah. not, that, let's not make that name <laughs> um, but, uh, but i was called fizzy 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 izzy because Fizz- i was oh. quite bubbly Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, we were talking about talking pictures. You've also been talking about other shows coming back, Liz. This is being covered in The Times, page 36. But uh, BBC Three has made its return to the airwaves. Yeah, what a farce. I remember, <laughs> I remember it being scrapped yeah. and put onto online only because the young audience they want to attract was only interested in that, and now they've put it back. But one of the funniest interviews I've ever seen was Jeremy Paxman interviewing Mark Thompson, the DG at Director General yes. at the time, 2012, and he said to him, do you know what's on BBC Three tonight? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he goes, Skippy the Kangaroo, mm-hmm. then a, a documentary about marsupials in the Australian outback, then Skippy the Kangaroo with subtitles. And, you know, just absolute rubbish. So it's brought back, it's a real mixed bag. There's repeats, there's sport... None of the BBC channels are defined at all now. It used to be that uh, BBC Four was for arts. Yes. Mm. Music night. Friday night was all music documentaries. So I think the BBC should get up to date... Do very much what Sky does, where they have designated channels. We've got Sky, Sky Documentary, Sky, Sky News, History. Sky Sports, Sky History, yeah. Sky mm-hmm. Arts, which mm-hmm. is a brilliant channel. Because people don't sit there all night now and watch whatever's put in front of them, for instance, on BBC One or BBC mm-hmm. Three. They, they think, I want music tonight or yeah. I want football. Yeah. And they should organise it and do it in that who, way. Who, who is BBC Three for? 
It's for young people, apparently. Mm. I don't but watch it. I don't. To be honest. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's just it's just crazy, and and to bring it back was a really bad timing. Just as Nadine Doris said, yeah, you're going to have to cut your cloth to fit. Accordingly, yeah. And we might scrap the last bit. Okay. Mm. Just as an aside, there's an article today in the Daily Mail that in Denmark, because this is a, you know, it's not unique to the world, uh, Europe, um, they, they, you have to fund public service broadcasting. And in Denmark, they've decided they're going to tax the big American companies like Netflix, Disney Plus, and they're going to use that money domestically yes. to create, to create That's con local smart idea. domestic content. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what I think is strange? When I was young, you used to be able to turn on BBC One, eight o'clock on a Monday night, Star Trek, uh, 8 o'clock on a Thursday night, Dallas, right? You will never, ever see an American program on evening time uh, British TV, ITV or BBC. Oh, not really noticed. You don't. They're absolutely not. There's some no. sort of agreement or whatever it is. It does not happen. So it will be a British drama, whatever. And you know, that may well be a good thing. I think that's a great thing. Well, yeah. you say it's a great thing, but there are so many great American series mm. that it's sort of like, I think it's again quite patronising that you can't see this show. We're not putting this on network TV because it's not good for you. <laughs> we'll cultivate our own yeah, boring stuff or whatever. Yeah. But um, I'll get you a Dallas box set, though, if you want. You <laughs> yeah, want but, you know, but that was part and parcel. That was the yeah. domestic diet. That's the way it was, right near wrongly. Right near wrong, I'm just saying. Just saying. Anyway, guys, thanks very much that indeed. Was lovely. Elizabeth and uh, Oscar will be back in one hour's time. Yeah, don't run away. I want to know what your, what your nickname was at school, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah.